Welcome to PG Patshala, the topic on biophysics and today I am talking about module 2 about cellular function and cellular organization. I am Dr. Ruby Dhar, I am a DBT Biocare Fellow and I work at Ames, New Delhi. Now, life reveals unpredictable levels of organization. Atoms are structured into molecules. Molecules group together to form organelles and organelles form into cells. The type of cell we are considering does not matter. All cells have some similarities in features such as a cytoplasm, cell membrane, ribosomes, DNA and RNA. Eukaryotic cells have a large assortment of structures and organelles. Although some organisms are so simple that they can exist as one cell which are called the unicellular, on the other hand multicellular organisms are organized in a particular way. The organization allows them to carry out life functions such as obtaining food, releasing energy and reproducing. So just to give an introduction about the chapter, cells are the basic units of life. They are like small machines that facilitate and sustain every process within a living organism. Different cells have different functions like muscle cells contract to maintain a heartbeat and allow us to move. Neurons form networks that give rise to memories and enable thought processes. Epithelial cells arrange to form surface barriers between tissues and the many cavities throughout our bodies. Not only do different cell types facilitate unique functions, but their molecular, genetic and structural compositions may also differ. For this reason, different cell types often possess variations in phenotype such as size and shape. A cell's function is achieved through the culmination of hundreds of smaller processes, many of which are dependent on each other and share protein or molecular components. Despite the phenotypic and functional variations that exist between cell types, it remains true that a high level of similarity exists when exploring subcellular processes, the components involved and importantly the organization of these components. With most subcellular processes under precise regulatory control of other subcellular processes and with components often shared between different molecular pathways and protein cascades, cellular organization is of great importance. This is true for every cell type with, compart with compartmentalization of subcellular processes and protein localization, recruitment and delivery ensuring they are constantly repeated in an efficient manner and with accurate results. At a basic level, eukaryotic cells can be described as containing three distinct subcellular regions, namely the membrane, the cytosol and the nucleus. However, cellular compartmentalization is further complicated by the abundance of specific organelles. In this module, we will discuss about various organelles in a cell, their function and why we need this kind of organization. So this module consists of the following objectives. Number one, importance of compartmentalization, difference in cellular organization and then various compartments of cells and uh, what is the function of various uh, compartments. Now starting with importance of compartmentalization. Cells are not an amorphous mixture of proteins, lipids and other molecules. So they have a definite uh, boundary 
and limit in which and with definite organization. Instead, all cells are comprised of well-defined compartments, each specializing in a particular function. In many cases, subcellular processes may be described based on whether they occur at the plasma membrane, within the cytoplasm, or within membrane-bound organelles such as nucleus, Golgi apparatus, or even vesicular components of the membrane trafficking system like lysosomes and endosomes. Compartmentalization can also have important physiological implications. Number one, spatiotemporal control of various macromolecules. In eukaryotes, synthesis of DNA, RNA, protein and lipids is performed in a spatiotemporal manner. Each molecule is produced within specialized organelles or compartments with strict regulatory mechanisms existing to control the timing and rate of synthesis. Example, like DNA and RNA are synthesized in the nucleus while protein is synthesized in the cytoplasm. In eukaryotes, where there are no separate compartments, both transcription and translation occur simultaneously in the same uh, space. And second is about the protein localization. In order for subcellular processes to be carried out within defined compartments or cellular regions, mechanisms must exist to ensure the required protein components are present at the sites and at an adequate concentration. The accumulation of a protein at a given site is known as protein localization. Recruitment of protein to specific organelles is essentially a form of protein recognition made possible by the presence of specific amino acid sequences within the protein structure. For example, polarized epithelial cells which possess distinct epical and basolateral membranes can for instance produce a secretory surface for various glands. Similarly, neuronal cells develop effective networks due to the production of dendrites and exonal processes from opposite ends of the cell body. Moreover, in the case of embryonic stem cells, cell polarization can result in distinct fates of the daughter cells. And the next importance of cellular organization is directed delivery of the components. Protein localization can result from the recognition of passively diffusing soluble proteins or protein complexes. However, this may not guarantee a sufficient concentration of components to maintain a given process. This can impede its completion, particularly when carried out in regions with a limited cytoplasmic volume such as the tip of a philopedia or when components are rapidly turned over. A more efficient way of maintaining the concentration of protein components is by their directed delivery via the cytoskeletal network. Now the fourth point is communication pathways with different processes being carried out in separate subcellular compartments organized across different regions of the cell, intracellular communication is paramount, which is achieved through various signaling pathways. This ultimately ensures individual compartments function official, efficiently and enables one subcellular process to drive another and allows a cell to facilitate its primary functions in an efficient and coherent manner. Now next we'll be talking about the difference in cellular organization. So as we have discussed in module 1 also, cell types broadly can be prokaryote and eukaryote depending on the organelles and the nucleus present. Prokaryotes have no membrane bound organelles and they have genetic material but no nucleus which include bacteria, fungus and algae. On the other hand, 
eukaryotes have membrane bound organelles it includes plants animals and fungus and they have a nucleus which contains the genetic material various components of the cell so now we'll talk about the various compartments of a cell to begin with we'll start with the cell membrane this membrane works as a partially permeable barrier permitting very few particles through it while enclosing most of the naturally formed chemicals within the cell the uttermost boundary of a cell composed of lipids phospholipids and proteins it is called the gatekeeper of the cell lipid bilayer of the plasma membrane plays more of a structural role although sometimes they do give rise to biologically active substances like the second messengers on the other hand proteins act as the functional component of the membrane they play multiple functions acting as channels or gates involved in cell to cell interaction acting as receptors for hormones drugs and growth factors the membranes of a cell organ differ in chemical composition from the cell membrane like cell wall which is present in plants not every living being has a cell wall particularly animals and animal like protistans bacteria consist of cell walls comprising of the chemical by name peptidoglycan cellulose and indigestible to humans uh, mostly polysaccharide is the most common chemical in the primary cell wall of the plant some of the plant cells similarly have lignin and additional chemicals implanted within the secondary cell walls stepping up to the next uh, compartment is the nucleus the nucleus is found in eukaryotic cells it is the governing organelle of the cell that controls the functions like growth and multiplication of the cell it is separated from the cytosol by a double membrane structure called nuclear envelope it is the site for most of the nucleic acids made by the cells such as dna and rna dna which is we call as deoxyribonucleic acid is the bodily carrier of legacy and except plastid dna every dna is limited to the nucleus rna which is the ribonucleic acid is molded in the nucleus by means of the dna based sequence as a prototype rna travels out within the cytoplasm where it helps in the assembly of proteins the chromatin in the nucleus is suspended in a clear colloidal solution called nucleoplasm this fluid is rich in enzymes and other proteins required for the replication of dna like the dna polymerases transcription of genes like the rna polymerases as well as the nutrients and regulatory biomolecules a dense mass closely associated with the inner nuclear membrane is seen in the nucleus which is termed the nucleolus and is a part of the nucleus where ribosomes are fabricated next are the vacuoles and the vesicles so what are their functions vacuoles are organelles that have a single membrane and are in a sense part of the exterior that is situated inside the cell the single membrane is characterized in plant cells as a tonoplast a lot of creatures use vacuoles as storing areas vesicles are smaller than vacuoles and function in carry materials both inside and outside of the cell now next we'll be talking about the ribosomes ribosomes are the spots of protein formation they are not bounded by membrane and therefore are found in equally eukaryotes and prokaryotes eukaryotic ribosomes are a uh, touch like they are much bigger than prokaryotic cells anatomically the ribosome contains a minor and major subunit biochemically the ribosome contains ribosomal rna and some 50s other structural proteins there are two places that ribosomes usually exist within a eukaryotic cell suspended in the cytosol and bound to the endoplasmic reticulum these ribosomes are called free ribosomes and bound ribosomes respectively 
free ribosomes which are present in the cytosol make proteins that will function in the cytoplasm later while bound ribosomes usually make proteins that are exported from the cell or included in the cell's membrane. In both cases the ribosomes usually form aggregates called polysomes or polyribosomes during protein synthesis. Polyribosomes are clusters of ribosomes that attach to a mRNA molecule during protein synthesis. Organelles such as mitochondria and chloroplast in eukaryotic organisms have their own ribosomes. Ribosomes in these organelles are more like ribosomes found in bacteria with regard to size. The subunits comprising ribosomes in mitochondria and chloroplast are smaller, so these are 30s and 50s, than the subunits of ribosomes found throughout the rest of the cells are usually 40s to 60s. Coming up to the next organelle, uh, endoplasmic reticulum. It is a net of interlinked membranes that assist a function concerning protein transport and synthesis. The individual tubules vary in size, shape and connectivity with various subcellular organelles. Endoplasmic reticulum is connected to the plasma membrane and surrounds the nucleus and other organelles like mitochondria. Rough endoplasmic reticulum is so called due to its rough exterior owing to the several ribosomes that are bound along the ER. Rough ER attaches to the nuclear envelope from where the emissary RNA which is like the messenger RNA, mRNA that is the outline for proteins journey to the ribosome. This is involved in active protein synthesis. It is also involved in the synthesis of secretory proteins like digestive enzymes. Now smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not have the ribosomes typical of rough and ER and is believed to be involved in synthesis and transport of lipids and detoxification of variety of foreign substances like drugs and toxins. Next we will be talking about the Golgi apparatus and the dictyosomes. Golgi complexes are compressed stacks of membrane bound pouches. Camilo Golgi, an Italian biologist, revealed this structure in 1890s, though their exact role in the cells was not decrypted. Golgi functions as a packaging plant uh, and modifies the vesicles which are produced by the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The new membrane is developed in various cisterns or layers of the Golgi. The Golgi complex can be divided into three regions, proximal or the cis region which is the immediate extension of the endoplasmic reticulum and receives freshly synthesized protein from the latter. The medial region, most of the post translational modification of the newly synthesized proteins takes place in this region. So this is very well depicted in the uh, picture which shows the various uh, parts of the Golgi and the last one is the distal or the trans region. This region of Golgi apparatus is primarily associated with the secretory activity. The mature proteins are enclosed into the small vesicles that break off from the Golgi complex and migrate to the cell membrane for exocytosis. The next membrane which we are going to discuss is the lysosomes. They are comparatively big vesicles fashioned by the Golgi. Lysosomes are formed by budding from the Golgi complex. They comprise of hydrolytic enzymes that can terminate the cell. Contents of lysosomes come into use in the extracellular breakdown of the materials. Lysosomes act as the garbage disposal of a cell. They are active in recycling the cell's organic material and in the intracellular digestion of macromolecules. Lysosomes contain various hydrolytic enzymes, around 50 different enzymes that are capable of digesting nucleic acids, polysaccharides, lipids and proteins. The inside of a lysosome is kept acidic as the enzymes within work best in an acidic environment. If a lysosome's integrity is compromised, the enzymes would not be very harmful in the cell's neutral cytosome. Next, talking about the mitochondria. Mitochondria are rod-shaped organelles that can be considered the power 
generators of the cell converting oxygen and nutrients into ATP which is the adenosine triphosphate. ATP is the chemical energy or the currency of the cell that powers the cell's metabolic activities. This process is called aerobic respiration and is the reason animals breathe oxygen. They contain their own DNA and are thought to represent organisms like bacteria that are incorporated into eukaryotic cells. The mitochondria has been labeled as the powerhouse of the cell. The mitochondria is sandwiched by two membranous seeds. The inner cell membrane folds into a sequence of Christi that are the planes on which ATP is created. The matrix is the zone of the mitochondria that is surrounded by the internal mitochondrial membrane. Mitochondrial DNA and ribosomes are found in the matrix. Next talking about the plastids. Now they are organelles that exist in plants and photosynthetic eukaryotes and are bounded by membrane. So animals do not have plastids. Leucoplasts are recognized as amyloplasts store, they store starch and sometimes oils or proteins. Chromoplasts keep pigments that are associated with the bright colors of flowers or fruits. Now next organelles we are going to discuss is the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is responsible for cell shape, motility of uh, the movement of the cell and the motility of the organelles inside the cell. There are three types of filaments in the cytoplasm of most vertebrate cells, microfilaments, microtubules and the intermediate filaments. Unlike the human skeleton, the cytoskeleton is extremely dynamic, meaning the filament systems are able to lengthen or shorten very rapidly depending on the function or the requirement. This dynamic nature of the cytoskeleton is necessary for cells to be able to change shape, complete cell division or migrate and represents one of the cytoskeleton's most important features. Now we will elaborate about microfilaments. The base filament is composed of a protein called actin that is 42 kilodalton in weight. Microfilaments exist in their highest concentration in association with the cell periphery where they are believed to play an important role in anchoring membrane proteins. Microfilaments can also be organized into bundles called stress fibers which serve as contractile elements somewhat like little muscles within cells and these structures are important for maintaining connections between the cell and the surface on which it grows like usually the ECM the extracellular matrix and the cell interaction. In addition, these structures may be important for producing contractility to generate directional force during cell motility. A third microfilament based structure, the contractile ring is critical for the separation of a cell into its progeny during cytokinosis. Now the other component of the cytoskeleton are the microtubules. While microfilaments are thin, microtubules are thick. They are strong spirals of thousands of subunits. Those subunits are made up of protein called tubulin. They serve the following structure like maintaining the cellular structure, movement of the cell membrane, organelles and cytoplasm is all related to the tubules and the filaments. They are also very important during cell division. They connect to the chromosomes help them with their first split and then move to each new daughter cells. They are part of a small pair of organelles called centrioles that have the specific purpose to help a cell divide. Beyond the role that play in internal cell movement, microtubules also work together to form larger structures that work on the outside of the cell. They can combine in very specific arrangements to form cilia and flagella. Cilia are little hairs you might see on the outside of a paramecium or other prostates. They flap back and forth to help the cell move. Flagella are long thick tails 
they whip around and sometimes twill, pushing the cell along. Examples are the mammalian sperm cells and the bacterium helicobacter pyroli. Now, the third component of the cytoskeleton are the intermediate filaments. Intermediate filaments have a diameter of about 10 nanometer, which is intermediate between the diameters of the two other principal elements of the cytoskeleton that is the actin which is around 7 nanometer and microtubules which are around 25 nanometer. In contrast to actin filaments and microtubules, the intermediate filaments are not directly involved in cell movement. Instead, they appear to play basically a structural role by providing mechanical strength to cells and tissues. They are made up of various types of proteins which vary within different cell types. Namely, the proteins are various keratins, vimentins, glia fibers and desmins. Now to summarize, cells are the basic units of life and they are like small machines that facilitate and sustain every process within a living organism. Different cell types facilitate unique functions, but their molecular, genetic and structural compositions differ. Cells are not an amorphous mixture of proteins, lipids and other molecules. Instead, all cells are comprised of well-defined compartments, each specializing in a particular function. Compartmentalization of cells helps in regulatory mechanisms, protein localization, directed delivery of signaling purpose and division of labor. Prokaryotes like bacteria, fungi do not have any membrane bound organelle while eukaryotes have membrane bound organelles. Now in eukaryotes different organelles are required and perform different functions as we have discussed in the chapter the cell membrane, the nucleus, mitochondria so all perform different functions so that the entire cell is organized and a balance is maintained so that a constant homeostasis is maintained inside the cell. And thank you so much uh, and keeping your patience to listen to this uh, module and by this we end the module on cellular organization. Thank you.